we're going to be looking at how we can start to use this stabilization within Silhouette. And this has changed from older versions, making this workflow even more useful. Let's just take a look at the clip here. I've actually tracked in three different layers. I've tracked in the building. I've tracked in the side of the face. And I've got a track on the middle balloon here as well. And if we take a look at the trail the keyframes are making, you can see that movement is actually pretty good and pretty stable. But of course, there is another good way of testing to see how stable the tracking is. So I'm going to select the building one layer here, and I'm going to come up to the top of the viewer, go to stabilization, and I'm just going to click on active layer. And if I play that through, this will stabilize around that layer. And you can see that the buildings is looking, uh, it's actually looking pretty smooth. We're not getting any uh, strange bumps and jumps in there. And if I go to the side of the face, you can see again, that's looking pretty smooth. It's stabilizing up. And if I go to the middle of the balloon, we can see that the focus is around the balloon here. So that's stable, everything else is moving. So all in all, this is, uh, this is actually looking pretty good. And it used to be we could only stabilize the viewer around the active layer. But with Silhouette version seven, we can actually choose any node that has a layer with tracking data on it to stabilize around. Now I could have tracked directly within this Roto node and started my work straight away, but because I've got my tracks actually in the tracker node over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy a couple of them here. I'm gonna copy building one and I'm gonna copy balloons mid. So I control or command on Mac to select those and go to copy, come to Roto and go paste. And that will bring all those layers in with all the objects as well. Now I don't really care too much about the shapes. So I'm just gonna select all of those and just delete them because I'm not really that fussed about them at all. So the traditional way of using the stabilization is just to be working on the stabilized layer and I'm in Roto 1, and let's go to Stabilize Around Buildings 2, and let's draw my quick shape around this object over here. There we go. So with this object drawn and my stabilization turned on in the viewer, I can take a look through here and see any sort of small changes that need to be made. Actually, in that case, there were no changes to be made, but I can make them directly there. So this is the equivalent of having the active layer selected. Another way of working is to create a layer without any sort of uh, tracking data on it. I'll just call this one, just call this one crown. And I'll still set building two as my stabilization layer so that when I create my crown shape, which I'll do very quickly, I won't even bother making this look nice. I'll just leave it like that. As we move through the viewer, the shape itself is actually static but the viewer is moving around, but I can easily just use that just to cancel out the movement of the, uh, the camera. So all I'm focused on is the movement of the crown there. And if we get this right, this can save a few keyframes. So we're just rotating the movement of the shape. There we go. And if I turn off the stabilization now, you'll see that fits just generally in the right place. Another way that I can do things, let's turn off the crown for a second, is again to use that uh, building two as my stabilization, but work on another layer that has tracking data applied to it. So in this case, let's try and get a quick shape around the balloon. Again, I'm not gonna get too accurate with what we're doing here. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to do. So now, I've canceled out the movement of the building, but I have this balloons mid layer already tracked in. So this is giving me a combination of those two bits of tracking data. And this makes this exceptionally easy to rotoscope in because I'm not sort of uh, trying to chase the balloon around because it's already tracked in. And I'm not trying to chase the camera around because that's already been stabilized out with the building track. So it's an incredibly powerful way of working and speeding up the rotoscoping work. Of course, 
we can also use this same idea if I come in to uh, add another node, I'll add a center spot node in here. We can do the same sort of thing to nodes that don't accept tracking data, but can be keyframed. So in this case, the center spot has a spot position. Turn the animation on on there. And just as we did with the balloons, we're not chasing around anything. If I turn that off there, it was a lot easier to place our keyframes when we weren't dealing with the rotation of the camera as well. So being able to stabilize around any node that has a layer with tracking data on it is a huge time saver in Silhouette. <laughs>